Hey everyone, this is Zach with IPF Racing, and before I can start the wide body kit, I've got to take the wagon virtual. I've got to scan it so that I can have a model to build off of, and so that's what I'm going to do today. It's going to be a little technical, uh, but hopefully I can show it in a way that's actually interesting. And uh, I realized that I didn't even show the render I had done of the wagon in the unveil video because I was so excited to unveil it. Um, so here's that render now, and a lot of people have commented, you know, why aren't you using an upper trim level bumper or, you know, something like that. It, I kind of just want my own thing, and uh, by this render you can probably tell that's what I'm going to get. Uh, so I'm going to start by washing the wagon, um, just because it's covered in dirt and it was in a, you know, shipping container for three months. Uh, and then I'm going to pull off all the stuff that I don't need. So that's some mud flaps because they're not staying. And then there were some brackets on the trunk that were part of the, what I have confirmed was a Telstra communications vehicle. So there's uh, some brackets for some of the stuff they were using there. Uh, so thanks to everybody in the comments that pointed that out on the last video, but I'm going to get it washed and then we'll get it scanned and then we'll start working on the wide body. So stay tuned. All right, I was gonna scan the wagon outside so that I can start working on the wide body kit, but the weather is not really cooperating. So I've moved a bunch of stuff around in here. Uh, as you saw in the tour, there was a lot going on in here. Um, I do keep it all on wheels, except for the two tables that were in here. They're not super heavy, so it wasn't a big deal, but I'm gonna pull the wagon in here and hopefully not hit the shelves on the side over here and then we'll get scanning. Close the garage door from the rain. I think there's, I think there's enough room for me to scan. So I'm gonna close this and then back up just to a tiny bit more. Uh, maybe I'll leave it there. All right, the wagon's in here. Unfortunately, there's not a great place to put the camera that captures 100% of it, but this is as close as I think I can get. I'm going to use a leaf blower and blow off all of this water that just got on there while it was raining right before I brought it in. And then I'm going to spray down most of it with some ASUB scanning spray. This will get rid of all the shine when I use the laser uh, scanner. That way it's not reflective, picks up everything. And then I'm gonna use some magnetic scanning markers. Hopefully I have enough to do at least one panel at a time. Um, I'm gonna try to do that so I can overlap the scanning markers and align it in the scanning software afterwards. That will make my life a lot easier. And then I only really need to do like two thirds of the car. So I don't need to do the side twice as long as I do the side with the gas cap first, which is this side. So we're covered there. Uh, I will do the whole hood, the whole front bumper, and then the whole trunk, and at least half the roof, and then I can mirror it. I really only need to design the wide body for half of the side, and then obviously the front, full front and the full back, um, which will probably also likely just be mirrored down the center, but it'll be nice to have the whole bumper to make sure it's aligned properly. Leaf blower, scanning spray, markers, go to town. Let's do it. I will probably do this just as a hyperlapse because there's no reason for me to make like a two or three hour long video of all this. So I'm going to also screen record the scanning on my PC. That way you can see, you don't really want to watch me point the laser, the scanner at the car. That's not very exciting. Uh, instead, I'll try to do an overlay so you can see both. And then, uh, for reference, I use an Einscan HX so I can do uh, blue laser scanning using the markers, or I can do structured white light scanning 
uh, using features and markers. Unfortunately, for a lot of body stuff, I found the structured white light scanning isn't the best because you're working with a big smooth surface. There's not a lot of features for the scanner to pick up on. I use it more for like engine based scanning or, you know, scanning underneath for packaging and stuff. It's also uh, lower resolution than the blue laser scanning with all the markers. So I'm going to do that and then we'll see how this turns out. Hopefully it turns out really good. I may have to use, I'll probably have to use some sticker markers on the bumper and maybe on the glass just because they're obviously not magnetic. Um, yeah, hyperlapse, let's go. It started by just drying the car off real quick and then putting on the Ace of Evaporating Scan Spray and then these markers randomly. And these markers are just the same kind of as your phone uses satellites for GPS. You need a couple of them to triangulate the laser scanner in 3D space. If you can see the blue laser cross hatching, that's where it's actually picking up data. And let's see what it looks like in the software. Here you can see right around the headlight. And if you see where all these markers are flashing red, that's where the scanner is actually picking up those. So you can kind of see how it triangulates in space. But you can see here, I got the hood, some of the hood, the fender, the headlight. And I got all of this in, in one you know fell swoop here. And the data is pretty, pretty clear. Uh, which is really nice so now that i've got this fender done i can move the markers and switch over to doing the door and the roof and kind of that top uh, body section over the windows and again we can see what that looks like in the software and here you can see me go up the a pillar you can see more of the triangulation of the markers uh, and you can see how this cross hatching and the blue lasers work so Anywhere that's kind of patchy and not densely colored blue, that's that's eventually going to get filtered out in the scanning software. So I got to make sure I go back and fill all that section in or I'm not going to get a full surface. And you can see when it says tracking lost that that's when I don't have enough markers in view of the camera for the cam for the scanner to triangulate. Um, but so what I do here is I go back down and I try to grab some of those markers from the previous scan at the fender and the door. And then I can come into the scanning software and take both of those scans and I can align them. It does this automatically most of the time, but you can see the overlapping markers here from the last scan and then this new one. And so I'm just picking, you know, these are the markers that we want to use and it does some magic here. So now you can kind of see it's looking more like one one vehicle but these two scans you can see where they overlap and it's really smooth because it's using the same markers was so perfectly aligned and now what i what i do for the rest of this video is really just repeat that process i moved on to the hood next and i use these different uh markers and they're the same sticker markers they're just on these little 3d printed pyramids and um octagonal things but that's really just so I didn't have to use the sticker ones. This hood is aluminum and not like my old Caprice PPV hood, which was steel. Um, but yeah, so I moved from here and then I started on the front bumper and then eventually get the car flipped around and scan the back. So at the end of the video, I'll pull up the full scan and we can look at all of it together. All right, so you can see I've got the front bumper off. Uh, I got the front bumper scanned. It's aligned to these markers on the hood and the ones on the fender. Uh, I want to get behind the bumper scanned so that when I design the new bumper, which we'll use, uh, I'll cut off the flange mounting points from the old bumper and then graft on the new one, but I need to be able to grab the bumper beam points and these uh, lower frame horn points so that way the bumper actually has some structure to hold onto. Uh, and then I can also use it for packaging other stuff like the water pump for the supercharger and uh, stuff like that. So. I'm going to get this scanned and then I can overlay it to the body scan to, you know, help me help me design that. That way I have all of the reference data available without having to go and try to scan something else again later. So I'm going to do that and then I can pull this even farther forward into the garage uh, now that the bumper's not there. And then I can do the rear quarter and then I'll back it out, flip it around and do the trunk. So I'm going to do that and uh, then we can start designing the wide body. Here you can see instead of the crosshatch laser pattern, this is the structured light scan. And because there's so many like bolt holes and all of the features and the injection molded parts and there's the AC condenser and the radiator behind it, there's just enough tiny features that the scanner can use those to triangulate itself in 3D space instead of having to use the markers. So 
Now the front bumper is done and the structure behind the front bumper is done. I'm gonna pull it forward and then scan the back quarter and the rear door and then I'll back it out and do the trunk. Keep you from being too bored while I just point the scanner at the body some more. I put the full scan down here at the bottom. You can see I did nine different scans and then I think there's three more that I added separately, which would be like the structure behind the front bumper. And then in a minute, you can see I take the trunk spoiler off and I scan underneath there and I scan the trunk spoiler off of the car. So that way I could design a new one to go with the wide body kit. But you can see these all lined up perfectly. Uh, I ended up not doing a bunch of the glass. I realized I wouldn't really need it. But you can see from this high resolution scan, I think it came out to like 20 million triangles or something when I processed it. But it's it's super high resolution. I can definitely build a wide body off of this um, and anything else I could possibly need. But like it's it's high enough resolution that you can see the detail in the badges on the trunk, right? Like this is a pretty, pretty good scan. And so I'm going to take this and export it into my CAD uh, software, which right now I'm just using Fusion 360 and I can design the wide body kit in there. But you can see the tear down of all these markers is kind of a pain. Um, this is me doing the trunk spoiler, just like I said. Uh, I think I broke like three or four tabs on the plastic trim, which is not a big surprise, but I eventually just pulled it out of the garage. It's still raining. Uh, and I think a couple days later came back and pulled off all these stickers. I don't want to leave you guys completely hanging with just watching me scan some stuff. So here's a quick preview of the rough wide body kit I've started to put together. You can see the front bumper. That's the roughest. It's also the most complicated. Uh, and then the front and rear fender flares and the trunk spoiler. I'll get to the side skirts at some point. Those are going to be a lot easier just to connect the dots uh, between the front and rear fender flares. But over here that you can't see and I won't show you yet is a huge wall of parts that have started showing up uh, thanks to a bunch of different sponsors and my wallet. Um, but that means that next week I'm going to start actually tearing down the wagon. So ripping out the suspension and the brakes and then also the motor and transmission. So stay tuned for that uh, merch also on the way. Um, so things are moving along really quickly and hopefully it's exciting enough for you. So uh, as always, I'm Zach, this is IPF Racing, and thanks for watching.